But let's move on to our fourth point, um, which is the war, war or battle of the sexes. And I put it like patriarchy or matriarchy. Now, there is a scene with Ken. Ken is the boyfriend of Barbie. I didn't know this. I mean, I found out for the first time. I just asked my wife, who is Ken? And I like, oh, it's her boyfriend. <laughs> I said, like, all right. Um, so you can see how removed I am from the Barbie world and things like that. Now, scene with Ken. Uh, it is very interesting because at the beginning of the movie, uh, Ken was just an extension of Barbie. And if there was any relevance or place of importance to Ken as a person, it was just because it was dependent on what Barbie desired or wanted or yeah. So, so Ken was not really important. It was almost like a shadow of, of, of Barbie, of the stereotypical Barbie of Margot Robbie, uh, the actress in this case. Um, and, but at the end of the movie, what you see is that um, the stereotypical Barbie or the Barbie na that has now reached this second naivete basically told Ken something along the lines of you are no longer an extension of me. You need to figure out your yourself on your own. And she even apologized to him for treating him that way, like as an extension. Uh, and so here is very interesting because Barbie in this case liberates Kent, his boyfriend, of being an, ex an extension of her uh, and, and basically she equalizes or she places Ken as a person at an equal playing field basically, at an equality level uh, and she says something really nice which is not every night needs to be girl's night. I think that's tremendous. That's a great, great, great part. Not every night needs to be girl's night. And that was the way of expressing because she was having girl's night every time before and Ken was just there, you know, as an adornment, basically. Um, and it's basically like you have a place of importance in the world. It's basically what she was trying to say there. And so this is a powerful thing because I was doubting is this movie gonna it's going to try to represent this or sell the lie that matriarchy is the solution or it's going to tell us a more interpersonal uh, harmonious uh, relationship between men and women and I want to speak a little bit about what I mean by the word of the sexes and I and I actually like the movie that it went beyond this naive framework of just men and women being enemies rather than companions in this complex uh, journey of life. Um, so when I when I am talking about war of the sexes, I'm talking about the extrapolation of the Marxist framework of reality to the sexes. Now, in some feminist philosophers, uh, who I completely disagree with. Uh, they portray the relationship between men and women as war and that there's no hope for peace or a way of collaborating together in this world, but rather just conflict and war. And even some feminist philosophers that are even more radicalized that I obviously don't agree with, they thought that the only way of overthrowing the patriarchy was lesbian relationships, lesbian relationships or homosexual relationships between two women uh, so that, you know, they they don't support or they, uh, or they are not part of the life of men. And so you can see how radical and crazy that sounds. Uh, and so this, this group uh, of feminists, um, they believe that on the war of the sexes, not all feminism is telling us that, okay? So I think that that's kind of like the critique I give to many people. It's like, well, it depends what you mean by feminism, which wave, which author, which school of thought within feminism, right? Because uh, feminism is uh, encompasses many implications depending on the wave and things like that. Uh, so that's why I said at the beginning, I am a feminist in some sense and, and not a feminist if you understand that in, in a different way, right? But anyways, there's a school of thought or a trend 
with the feminism which sees uh, the relationship between men and women as war, as dynamics of power, and that there's no beyond that. You know, there's nothing beyond that. It's just that, and that will always be the case. And this comes from an extrapolation of the Marxist framework. So what Marx points out is that members, and you can find this in Wikipedia, I actually, I, uh, I already knew this, but I wanted to just look for the terms in English because I read this in Spanish. Uh, Mark some of the text from Marx. I read them in Spanish. And so I'm going to read this part to you just to be quickly, to be quicker. So what Marx points out is that members of each of the two main classes have interest in common. This class or collective interests are in conflict with those of the other class as a whole. This in turn leads to conflict between individual members of different classes. Marxist analysis of society, this is key here, identifies two main social groups, okay? So the labor and capital or <clears throat> the proletariat or workers and the second class would be the bourgeoisie or capitalists, okay? So in the first group, we have the following, right? So the labor includes anyone who earns their livelihood uh, by selling their labor power and being paid a wage or salary for their labor time. They have little choice but to work for capital since they typically have no independent way to survive. And then with the, the other group class, uh, the bourgeoisie or capitalist, uh, capital includes anyone who gets their income not from labor as much as from the surplus value they appropriate from the workers who create wealth. The income of the capitalist, uh, therefore, is based on their exploitation of the workers or the proletariat. So, in this case, basically, is the, the surplus or la plusvalía in Spanish, is basically that for the capitalist to accumulate wealth, they need to pay you, lay, uh, they need to get more benefit for the hours that you are working than what you are getting paid, basically. And so that is the exploitation. Now, I'm not going to get into economic theory or ethical Marxism. And if I agree or not, that's not the point. The point is that the, fem the feminist group that thinks that war of the sexes is all there is and that we are at war and that the relationship between men and women is better understood in terms of asymmetry of power and that's that well obviously are extrapolating or, or basically using the marxist framework for economic uh, and the class uh, classes in in the societal structure extrapolating that and applying it more to men and women so in this case women would be the oppressed the proletariat and men would be the capitalists or the bourgeoisie that is taking advantage of the value that women provide and exploiting them, basically. That is, that is the idea. Obviously, I don't believe that the, 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 the relationships should be predicated on power. Uh, and I don't think that power is all there is. I think that, sadly, that happens all the time. And I'm not saying that this is not... Ha that this is not a reality for in many societies and for a lot of people and still in many places of the Western societies. This is the, this still happens, even though in many places there might be equal legal laws and things like that, but that doesn't necessarily imply that in, in praxis, that's the case, you know? And so I hear many reports of friends, women and their stories and clearly I'm like, whoa, I don't deal with that. I like the fact that the movie didn't remain there uh in that in that reading of the word of the sexes but went beyond that you know as okay no patriarchy no no nor matriarchy you know we need to live in the spirit of love of not lording over each other of not using our power of influence to gain more power and to privilege very few but rather to serve and this is obviously you can see here my christian perspective which I think that the embodiment of what it means to being a, the head of the family is actually a sacrificial um, uh, life 
of service as Christ did with the disciples of washing their feet and dying for their disciples and for the world. And so I think that if you want to be a person of power, a person of influence, a person, be the greatest servant ever to everybody and not use your rights and your power and your influence as a way of uh, exploiting people, but rather to serve them, to make them better, bigger, healthier, uh, and bless people with what you are given. Uh, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, but anyways, yes, so that's that. Not every night needs to be girls' night. So here, word of the sex is petrogeometry. I think that Barbie in the end doesn't portray that. It seemed to portray that because, you know, it was Barbie land, all those. And then, you know, you, if you see the movie, there is a conflict between them. And so it's men and women. But I think that there is a hint or a suggestion at the end by not every night needs to be girls' night. And bar the stereotypical Barbie for asking apologizing to Ken and say hey you need to have an identity of your own and not be depending on me as a way of you know what men should model for women in this society like we need to so to speak embody the it, it, this um, spirit of equality with regard to women as Barbie does with Ken that's basically the idea and this is also hinting at the notion that Feminism is not about equality for women, but also equality for men, because men have these scripts, these monologues, this belief about the archetypal men. Uh, and this will, <laughs> we'll see this more when I do the Andrew Tate thing. I will speak more about the male um, social uh, symbol, you know, or how we understand manhood as well. Um, but yeah, so you, you see, you see this, uh, that even this idea that men have to always be I don't know, as some people put it, stoic or put together or always having the answer, always performing, always competing and things like that. It can be exhausting. It can be exhausting uh, and also tyrannical. So the idea is that feminism is not just for women, but also for men's problem. I do have a pet peeve with that, to be honest. I don't think that even if they try to be also for men, I do believe that men would benefit a lot from having equality, you know, because they will also de uh, eliminate bad beliefs about what it means to be a man but i think that there are unique problems that if you do not prioritize uh men from the very beginning in the sense of okay let's try to understand why men are killing themselves more often than not uh, compared to women uh, or why men are dropping out from school and just not doing well and giving into addictions i think that it could be too easy to say oh, okay feminism can fix that i think that's a little bit dismissive i don't think that's the case i think that each case needs to have its proper attention that's what i believe and i think that feminism has focused very well on women's issue but i think that trying to be all for everything and for every cause i think that's too much for any social movement to be honest